Hi right there, this is Darren from Treasure Life Family Farms and I'm building a little project uh, today. It's a little hot outside so we worked out there a long time and now we're building indoor projects while it's kind of hot out. So today we want to build a boot rack for all the muck boots and so I'm thinking of a master design a little bit like this. So it'll have a couple ends with PVC tees it goes into a rack of a whole bunch of PVC tees and then uh, a second row back here uh, I think I've got it all figured out anyways this is how uh, things get designed and built around here I went to Menards, bought a whole bunch of pipe fittings that sort of matched my plan, but then once I got home I had to actually try and figure out how long to cut all these PVCs. I got some 10 footers out there and my original idea was to put this in a, about a 36 inch space, but I don't think that'll actually even work at all. So it's going to turn out more like 47 inches tall. And, or wide, sorry, and then uh, around 27 deep. So I'll go uh, cut all the pieces that I think I need, and then I'll come back in and probably put down some butcher paper so I don't get that glue all over the table. And uh, we'll start putting it together in here and see if it turns into much. Keep tuned and we'll go do it. All right, we're out in the garage. And I actually uh, moved my saw out onto a table. These are uh, lifetime tables from Sam's Club. And uh, we bought a bunch of them three or four years ago and we started using them for everything and they're great. So we'll keep doing that. Um, but I set up out here versus being on my wall bench because there's so much of this to do. I just don't wanna be fighting with all the other stuff on the bench. So we're out here working on this. A couple two by fours of the same height to hold that into the pipe. Works great. I'm using the abrasive metal cutting saw for the pipe this time. I think uh, I could equally use, I've got a rigid uh, miter box uh, wood saw. Would also work. This is going good, so I'm gonna just keep with it. So the method to my madness, and I don't know if I can do this, with the camera in the hand, but I kind of hold my pipes end to end and then I pull down the blade and slide over to it. I can't really show that, but that's what I do. I've got uh, uh, kind of my main uh, pipe for the three different sizes I need, and I've actually got both of the nines cut, so I'm done with that. And I got a bunch more fours to cut, a bunch of threes to cut, so I just slide the pipe down. Uh, uh, match them up, slide it over to the <clears throat> to where it bumps the blade and then cut them off. And just, uh, you always want to keep using the same main pipe because if you switch every time it'll, you'll grow longer or shorter over time. Then I bring them over to the bench grinder and just touch them real lightly with a forward roll. It takes all the junk off, you know, just a little bit that the uh, abrasive saw leaves and uh eventually i got to cut some uh, i think i settled on 19 inch uh for the upright risers i got two more lengths of this pipe that should get us all we need there with a little bit to spare in the end so let me get this one set in there and i think i could even show show you show show you how i cut it so i'm going to match the ends up pull down my we can see here pull this down slide over just bump it just so slightly we're all matched up so we're going to be the same length i'll set this main one down and let's see if i can show you this cutting or if it's going to go crazy there it is get a little more 
more junk on. There's not a lot left here when we get done. Just a little, little tab there. The rest of it's actually kind of smooth. But just to make it nice and sharp for when we're inside, I just touch it up there a little bit, get that nice and touched. I roll forward again. It just does a nice job. We've already cut this pipe before, so both ends need this. I don't know if they actually need this or not, but I'm doing it. And then we're done with this one. This one goes in our little bucket of gadgets. And I will go cut all the rest of the parts and we'll have a little bucket full of stuff and we'll go inside and start gluing her together. All right, so I, I've got a bunch of my pieces cut. Those are all three inch ones. I've got some more in my bucket here. I'll pull them out as I need them. But I've kind of got the ones for the sides, not, not the main strings with the boots on them, but this is just gonna literally be about like this with another one just like it facing back and so I think when it comes time to making sure this stuff's lined up I'll glue like the first one in there and then when I go to glue the second one I think laying them on the table flat like that to make sure that we're not five degrees off in some direction on our parallelism here that we need and then these ends won't matter and when I go to make the main manifolds, you know, they're going to have the risers on them to hold the boots. Those will have to be even more perfect, hopefully. So we'll see how I do. And then also, I think with this project, we're not worried about a water leak. So I think there's, you know, kind of a less glue will be better. So we're not dripping a lot and getting ourselves into problems. So let's uh, give it a go. We'll try to put this one together and then I'll show you how I did because I don't have a tripod with me today. And so I can't stand you up here and let you watch. Or maybe I need to figure out a way. Just stick this handle in the glass or something. But for now, uh, let me put this one together and we'll see what we do. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna build the second one here and I was just gonna point out something important here is to make sure since these sweeps were cheaper than tees, I bought sweeps to make the uh, 90s instead of T. And with that being said, we want to make sure they go the same way. And I purposely have these both go out to make it farther away from each other and the boot, you know, between the boots. But we want to make sure to do that same thing down here. So now I want to see if I can set you down and in some way uh, let you watch what I do. I want to glue this down. You'll see something. I don't know if it'll be something useful. Let's give it a go. All right. So on the glue, I've been trying to wipe this clean as I can and then go for it. So just kind of swirl around the inside of the uh, inside of it first, and then on the outside of whatever the outside pipe is, a couple times. Throw that in the can push this together, hold it tight for about uh, 10 seconds. I don't know that I've seen these push away, but I guess that's what they do if you don't get that right. The next one, let's get those out of the way, is the kind of the most important one. And that is because this is where I gotta get these buggers lined up and not out of line. So we've got a swirl here, swirl here. And after we force this together, we're going to be down flat on the table with both of these and hopefully that will keep them lined up really good so that we can do that. It feels like it's off by just a hair, but there's nothing you can do about it at this point. It's that quick that you sort of lose control on being able to do any more. I think it'll be okay. We'll hope for the best. This one's going to have too much glue. I can only tell I didn't wipe my brush down enough. Got in a little hurry. Swirl here. This one's just as long as you keep it pushed in, there's no consequences. And then do the same up here. Wipe my brush down pretty good. This cap's got a lot of distance to them, so a little extra glue there 
doesn't kill it. Swirl here, throw that in the can, and push this on tight. And now we're going to do that two more times on this other end here. And then we'll compare the pieces and see how we did. So far, I actually put a paper towel on top of the butcher paper just to give myself one more layer of not dripping glue on anything important. That's been just dripping on the paper towels so far. The swirl inside the cap, that's all you do there. And then a couple rounds around the pipe here. Throw that back in the glue, push and hold. Two seconds. And hopefully these are quite symmetrical. Let's hold this up. I think this one is tweaked just a hair that way, and that's unfortunate, and it's not that, I don't think we'll know, I don't think we'll have a big problem with that. But uh, these are the ends, they'll face each other like that, except for about four feet apart. You know, for for their part, and then in between, we're gonna build. Uh, there'll be an inch and a half, just a short piece. These are inch and a half, right off the get get here. Then a T up, a three inch, and another T up, and a three inch, and a T up. We'll have six sets of uh, boot holders, total of twelve, and six here, six down here, and that should be your boot rack. I'm going to probably build, well, probably, I'll, I'll show you after I get one of the manifolds built. And then after that, we'll probably put the whole thing together and show you the finished product. That's all right. All right. Uh, we have the base together. We glued a whole bunch of this stuff together. Again, pressing the faces on the table to keep them sort of lined up, hopefully. And let's see, what else? Okay, so then after we got those done... We glued them into these ends. Same thing. And so now we gotta go cut the risers. I didn't cut the risers yet because I was just a little nervous that maybe all this would just be junk by now and I could have two full lengths of uh, 10 footers left out there. And, you know, if this is all going to junk, then no need to wreck those two. So, but I, I think we're good. So I'm gonna go cut these risers at 19. Then we'll bring them in and uh, put them in here, glue them down, and then put the caps on, glue the caps. I'm a little curious if the last one, when I glue that cap, maybe I won't glue the caps. I'll think that through. Um, if I go to glue that cap, I wonder if it'll even go on or if it'll kind of pressure up and then not work. Maybe I need to drill a pinhole somewhere. Anyways, uh, here's the base. And I will go make 12 risers out of two 10 foot chunks of pipe, all 19 inches. All right, well, this is it for better or for worse. Uh, that's how it's going to be. So we'll go uh, make a spot for it outside and we'll take it out there and put it together and see how we do. What's the worst that could happen, right? Why am I building a boot rack? Well, this is part of it. Uh, one thing we do here at the farm is uh, we tend to buy nice boots because we're slopping in the mud. I mean, it's dry out now, but uh, it's wet plenty of times. The flies get me. If you're going to uh, feed the pigs or work in the garden, a lot of times you just need these boots. And they all lay like this. Because everybody takes them off. Hope that fan blowing on us isn't doing too much to rile you. So uh, then they won't leave them out here because then you know in the garage there's a chance a mouse will go in there, and then they'll forever not wear a hundred dollar pair of boots just because there might have been a mice in there. So, <clears throat> so we've got this spot here, and hopefully uh, I'm going to clean that out. It's been cleaned out already uh, just a few days ago and now it's filling back up with stuff, but 
gonna sweep that out. I probably have to move those tables that way about a foot based on what I think I just did. And then we'll, uh, I think I've even got a carpet um, square thing. Oh, it's not carpet, it's a, I don't know, entry mat or whatever it is. Uh, that goes down there first. And then we'll put our gizmo there and put some boots on it and arrange all this and we'll see what we think. I'll be right back with that. All right, well, this might have actually worked. I guess I had more space in there than I thought I had. Because uh, I ended up building it longer than I measured and thought I was going to have to move the table, and I didn't. So that's nice. And so we've got Dad, Mom, Sydney, Craig, Isabella, and Taylor. So by age, and if you take a uh, boot off of here, their first initials on their spot. Not sure why this had ever come apart. Oops, I dropped the broom. Um, we got a little extra room down here. I think we're good on that. Hopefully that'll keep any critters, mice, or anything else from hopping up. Over the long haul, I plan to keep this area in front of the steps cleaner, more blown off with the hose, vacuumed up with the vacuum. It's also part of this is we're going to do that. May end up pushing this back against the wall a little bit more. Not sure. Uh, well, probably will. There's no reason it kind of hangs out this far. And that gets rid of all the mud boots, which just leaves us with a little bit less of everything to deal with. And I think as long as we keep a path clean out here, for everybody to be able to come put their boots on. Uh, people won't mind doing it. And putting them here, taking them off, putting them back on. So that's kind of a, a bit of a wrap on this project. I'm gonna go over the uh, cost of it. Maybe take a look and see uh, how that went. And then maybe you can build your own. All right, so here's the economics behind the uh, boot rack. We have uh, $4.19 for the Oatly Cement. There is a smaller jug of that I could have got for a buck and a half less, I guess. Uh, when I looked at it, I was also thinking how many joints I had. It's like, no way, we couldn't possibly run that littler one out, right? And I think the little one would be okay, so go for the little one on that. Um, we got uh, 16 T's, buck 49, 16 caps at $1.13. I thought about not doing those caps on the top. You have to do them on the legs, I think, the four. The 12 on the top, I also would highly recommend. Uh, you could put boots on there with no caps, but I think the edges of the pipe might be a little bit rough on the interior of your boots. So do the caps. But it costs you 18 bucks to do the caps. Well, probably less than that, like 16 more. 16, uh, 12 times about 13, whatever that is. Uh, and then you need three lengths of PVC, even though you end up with about a four, four and a half footer left by the time you uh, get done. So then it adds up like this. $72.99 plus $6.02 in tax, $79.01. That's what it cost me to make one for myself. I don't expect anybody wants one really bad, but if you do, I will make you one for $150 plus shipping and handling. And uh, that's uh, about what I would say would make it worth my time to do one. I don't think anybody will want one from me, but uh, you know, you never know. So if you're wanting one, that's what it is. Uh, shipping and handling, I, uh, I don't know where you're at. If you're gonna stop by, there's no shipping and handling. Just come over to the house and get one. If you are a few states away and you want it put in a box, you'll have to find a box that's uh, going to fit that, and it'll cost a few bucks for the box, and then uh, shipping, who knows? The thing weighs probably 35 pounds, I guess, would be my guess, uh, without having weighed one. And that's my boot rack project, so thanks for watching, and, uh, you know, if you get stuck building one, uh, ask me in the comments. I'll probably help you out. Thanks for watching. Bye.